Good afternoon. It's Friday, July 30th, 2010. I'm Jill Eckhart with your Ernerberry Market Report, sponsored by the 2010 Innovative Beef Symposium, August 25th through 26th in Denver, Colorado. Today, foodmarket.com is reporting Pilgrim's Pride Corporation announced its second quarter net income fell to 32.92 million from 53.24 million in the year ago period. The company reported net sales of 1.71 billion for the second quarter that ended June 27, 2010 versus 1.78 billion in the previous year. Get more on this story and other news from the center of the plate at foodmarket.com. Now, let's set the tone. In the egg market, retail demand is fairly good nationwide. Supplies of white shells are adequate, that of brown shells are close, and the latter are wanted. Eggs for breaking are sought, the market is steady. Liquid whites may be coming under a modicum of pressure. Looking at chicken, it has been a fairly quiet start to the day, but overall market conditions are stable with offerings being adequate at most for the majority of the listed lines. Wogs and whole birds look to be searching for a bottom. Whole breasts and breast fronts are generally well supported with movement to Canada assisting their cause. Dark meat continues to prosper under improved export business. Talking turkey, it looks like today will be a quiet one overall as this week's and early next week's buying requirements are either satisfied or those seeking product have exhausted possibilities. Fresh Tom breast meat is very tight and rated as full steady to firm. Deli operations continue to report active cooking schedules. Frozen Tom breast meat isn't pursued to the degree of fresh, but it is too extremely snug. For the most part, these comments apply to all tenders, breast trim, scapula, and wing meat as well. Now, with a look at some second quarter GDP figures, here's Matt Shiver. Thanks, Jill. The real gross domestic product, or GDP, is the output of goods and services produced by labor and property located in the United States. The real GDP increased at an annual rate of 2.4% in the second quarter of 2010. The increase in real GDP in the second quarter primarily reflected positive contributions from non-residential fixed investment, exports, personal consumption expenditures, private inventory investments, federal government spending, and residential fixed investments. Imports, which are a subtraction in the calculation of the GDP, also increased. Back to you. Thanks, Matt. Moving over to red meats, there are a few more price changes noted for quick ship offerings of box beef, with both discounts and advances collected in the first canvas of the market. Sellers appear to be adjusting to inventory positions and current demand patterns. Ribs and peeled tenderloins are discounted from many major processors. Varied price movements are seen for strip loins. The current weekly federal inspected slaughter trails last week's pace by 3,000 head, with some hours reportedly being pulled from packing houses this weekend. Now taking a look at the cow markets, here's Ernerberry market reporter Bill Smith and Cattle Facts' Dwayne Lenz. Thanks, Jill. I'm here with Dwayne Lenz, Director of Market Analyst at Cattle Facts this morning. Dwayne, I was taking a look at the uh, live cow market and noticed San that the San Angelo, Texas market traded at a record high price last night going back all the way to 1995. I was wondering if you could help me out with uh, what's causing the high prices in that market. Yeah, Bill, there's a couple different things working. Uh, demand for trimmings remains very good. Uh, even in the economy, we have trimmings or something that people will come after. As far as the fundamental side, uh, cow slaughter in the country is starting to drop a little bit during the summer. Uh, we're just coming into this smaller and smaller cow herd all the time, so these packers have to work harder to finding that supply. At the same time, imports coming into the country uh, remain uh, lower than a year ago, so we have a little bit of a vacuum for that bear demand. Okay. Are, are the premiums developing in other regions of the country as well on the live end? Yeah, okay. solar cow prices are, are quite stout nationwide. Uh, again, it's just trying to draw the cows out from the country, and they're having to do it with price. Okay. Are the high prices exclusive to the cow market, or is the Fed market trading near historical highs as well? The uh, Fed market's not at historical highs, but it's it's a lot better than we expected. Um, beef demand actually is coming in higher uh, year over year, which surprised us a little bit. Uh, we just traded cow this week at 93, and I think all time highs are a dollar ten, dollar fifteen. So off all time highs, but for summer market, uh, it's extremely good Fed cattle market. Okay. Will the strength in these markets continue moving forward? Now on the cow side, I think we'll start losing some ground. Typically, ranchers pull the cows off. About 80% of the ranchers will pull their cows off in the fall and wean. At that point, they, they market their call cows. So as you get especially into September, October, November, we expect 
uh, cow prices to and trimming prices, even though they may stay at a premium to years past to start declining going forward. Fed cattle market, we think we're just kind of sideways here in the low 90s, uh, maybe for the next uh, 45, 60 days. All right. Thanks, Dwayne, for taking the time to talk with us this morning. We appreciate it. You betcha, Bill. See you later. Thanks, guys. Looking at pork, hog buyers are expected to cast mostly steady to some firmer bids for hogs today in what is expected to be typically light Friday trade. Friday's hog slaughter is assessed at 355,000 head and Saturday at 20,000. If these numbers hold up, the weekly slaughter total, total will only reach 1.94 million head and the packing sector is still planning on operating at a reduced levels, at least through next week, in the face of still tight hog supply. Today, supplies of fresh pork and pork processing items are all thin given the sustained reduction in slaughter operations. Significant trade has yet to develop as of this morning. However, a firmer undertone is present in all complexes. Don't forget to check out Erner Berry's Insider's Red Meat Report in its entirety this afternoon on Comtel. That's your Erner Berry Mid-Morning Tone brought to you by the 2010 Innovative Beef Symposium. Be there to be the first to hear about new value-added cuts, how to fabricate merchandise and menu them. Space is limited, so head to beefinnovationsgroup.com to get registered.